So we're uh, we're working right below this wind tunnel on a on an experiment that's testing uh, ducted wind turbine power output and uh, specific trailing edge devices that will uh, increase the power output of a ducted wind turbine. We're looking to see if these trailing edge devices would be something that could be feasibly used on full scale ducted wind turbines, um, just because the issue with wind energy is that at the current moment. Uh, you're not able to produce enough power for it to become a feasible energy option, so you have to look at ways to increase the efficiency of the wind turbines and increase the power output. The Wright Brothers Wind Tunnel was built over 75 years ago. In fact, it was inaugurated in 1938, and it was built to meet the growing need to test faster and larger aircraft that were being uh, designed and produced at that time. If we go back historically, the, the first tunnel, uh, in fact the first building in the MIT campus was a wind tunnel that was built by uh, Jerome Hansacker and that was actually a tunnel that uh, was used here in Cambridge for a number of years together with other smaller tunnels that were built. So the wind tunnel is, uh, is uh, powered by a, an electric drive, it's uh, 2,000 horsepower, it has a six plate 13-foot diameter variable pitch fan. It's what's called a variable density tunnel. It's the only, only one of its kind in the country uh, that's not owned by NASA. Originally, the, the tunnel was capable of 400 miles an hour. It didn't achieve that for very long. It uh, produced so much noise. I'm told, I've never heard it, but uh, in the four speed, which is the, the highest speed it can go, uh, at 400 miles an hour, it could be heard all the way to Beacon Hill from here which is a couple of miles, a couple of miles east of here. So uh, it, uh, it, was, it must have been quite noisy. And uh, one of the interesting uh, little facts of the tunnel is that the, the door is actually the door off a submarine. The, uh, the company that, that built the original shell for the, uh, for the tunnel was uh, ship, ship builders, uh, local ship builders. And uh, when they found out that we needed a pressure door for the uh, tunnel, they decided to uh, just use a standard submarine pressure door of the... Uh, so when I first came here in 1990, uh, there was, a, there was a, a heavy emphasis on architectural aerodynamics. Frank Durgan, my predecessor, was, uh, was uh, one of the real pioneers in that area. And uh, they were doing a lot of, uh, a lot of different buildings. Uh, and that was kind of interesting to do. Uh, it, was, it was something that, that I had never seen done. You know, I, I think of wind tunnels as being sort of aircraft design type uh, devices and, and uh, the architectural side of it uh, was, was, was rather interesting to see. I first took over the wind tunnel in July of 1969 and looking at the room now it's, it's fabulous because there was no room to hardly sit down in the test room and the office next door was so full of filing cabinets and old models that there was no place to put a desk or for anybody to sit down. You've got to have somebody over here whose only responsibility is the wind tunnel and who cares to keep it looking like this and to know where all of the odd things are. Uh, if you don't do that, the students come in and they they just don't understand that, that you have to worry about the history as well as what's going on at, at the present moment. And this is the test section of the, uh, of the tunnel. Uh, the test section is uh, seven and a half feet tall, 10 feet wide, 15 feet long. And the, the flow comes from this direction down that way. Uh, this is actually the smallest part of the wind tunnel. Uh, the tunnel gets progressively larger as you go around. The tunnel kind of looks like a, like a donut laying on its side, and, uh, and the air continually circulates around. Primarily, the tunnel is a student tunnel. The students have first call on it. If an undergraduate uh, needs the tunnel for any, any particular undergraduate purpose, they can literally uh, uh, take the tunnel away from the NASA guys or, or, the, uh, the, or the commercial guys. Everybody kind of understands that. Is that the students have first call. Overall, one can see that 
the use has changed significantly from its original intent and one of the things that has been common throughout the years is that in addition to being used for research and to advance the state of knowledge it has always been used for education and in fact education is nowadays its primary use. The, the tunnel has become an iconic landmark. When we had the 150th MIT celebration, the tunnel was one of the most visited attractions. Literally thousands of people went through the tunnel and, and were able to, to, to realize its history and the important role that it has played for, for the department and in many ways for, for the nation and for MIT.